Hi everybody, Kevin here. Welcome to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today I had an idea to make a little project out of a bunch of junk I had lying around in the shop, so let's get started on that. Most of us at one time or another have ended up in a situation where we're getting ready to go somewhere. Either you're taking the boat to the lake or going camping for the weekend with the house trailer or you're hooking up a car trailer or a dolly to take your favorite hunk of junk to the racetrack. Anyway, <laughs> you're just ready to go and you get all hooked up and the lights on the trailer don't work. What do you do? So, um, at least on the truck we have the option. You can buy these things pretty cheap, you know, and you just... You just plug that in there. And you can go through and you can you can check all your lights on that. Not quite so easy to test the trailer. Um, there's ways to muck around with it, but sometimes it's not at all easy. So I was cleaning up around here and I found this old Makita drill box and I said, what can I do with this? I said, I don't know, set that aside. And then I found some trailer plugs and some wiring and stuff and I came up with the bright idea. I'm going to make inside this little case a trailer tester. So rather than um, having to hunt down a truck to go plug into a trailer when I want to test the lights on it, I could just take this little metal box, it'll have all the stuff inside it. I'll use one of these things to power it. Pretty much everybody's got one of these things nowadays. And uh, I could take this around and I could test all my trailers in, in one shot and make sure the lights and the brakes and everything are, are working on them. So at least if you're, if you're having a problem and you don't think the problem is the truck because, I mean, this thing show you that the truck is working. You, we can use this to test the trailer. Anyway, I'm gonna get started. What I've got here, um, I got this, I don't know where I got this, but it's it's got a seven and a four. That's pretty handy. We're gonna use this one here. This is an old fashioned round four pin. We're gonna use that. We'll make a little harness that we can attach to this thing. And then um, this will be our, our, our jump cable because I do want to be able to plug this thing into the truck also. Why not? Um, and another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install this buzzer. I'll probably put it right there. That looks like a place where a round thing should go. So that I can go to the front of the truck, put the ignition on, and put it in reverse. And I'll hear this thing buzzing at the back to make sure reverse works because some trailers have reverse lights. I know my car trailer does because when I'm backing up at the racetrack on a dark night, I like to be able to have a couple of backup lights on the back of the trailer so people know I'm backing up. Um, this here we'll use to make a jumper wire for four pin trailers. I think this will go pretty well. What I'm going to do is this. This snaps into the plastic on your bumper which is generally thicker than this thin sheet metal. So what we'll do is we'll use this 1 8 aluminum to make a little plate on here for this thing. And then across here is where I'm going to put all my switches. And I've even got little indicator lights. I bought these on uh, Amazon. I don't know, it was $15 for the whole bunch of them. So that should be pretty cool. Now it's time to start drilling holes. I've laid out our little mounting plate for the trailer plug itself. So I'm going to go ahead now and start drilling some holes. First thing we're going to do is uh, drill all these at 13 64ths. Then we'll open this one to a quarter and we'll open these to 3 8 Measure twice, drill once. Holy cow, I don't know how I screwed that one up so bad. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. We'll fix that up after. Now I'm going to put a two-inch hole saw through here. A little work with our deburring tool. We'll clean up this hole. And then we'll get out a jigsaw and cut out that. That's perfect. Now we'll get all this tape off of here 
and cut it off at the line. I'm going to mount this right here so I just laid it on there and I'm going to use my sharpie here and mark out all the holes where I have to cut. There's a good first step. We've got the, the plug mounted in there. I'm liking it. Now we're going to go ahead and mount the backup beeper and the power input plug. Well, it's starting to look like an invention anyway. I've drilled more holes. Now we're going to mount some more components. So here's how it'll look. We can plug in the truck or the trailer to here. If the trailer is plugged into here, power from this thing or a battery or whatever will be pumped into the box from here. Um, if it's plugged into the truck, I can simply operate the lights on the truck and these indicators will light up um, depending on what it's doing. And like I said, I've got my buzzer for reverse. If it's plugged into the trailer, that'll be hooked up to 12 volts and I could just one at a time park right signal, left signal. I can put them both on to simulate the brake lights being on. Reverse. And this will apply the electric brakes on the trailer. So to test this, I would have to have it jacked up so I could spin the wheel and then turn that on and the wheel should stop. Most of my trailers have breakaway switches on them so I can also check the brakes by doing that. And this indicator light is for the, the auxiliary 12 volt feed that's in all these seven pole plugs. Now I can start wiring it up. Last thing I installed was a, a 1032 screw to use as a, as a ground stud. All our grounds will go to that. Well, I think I've got it now. I've got everything wired into the plug so that when the switches are turned off, it just comes in and goes through the indicator light. That's for checking the outputs of the truck. I've also got, uh, I had to install a diode so that when I'm pumping power into it, rather than receiving power from it, if that's the way you want to put it, my indicator light, it, it doesn't come on at the wrong time. I only want this to light up when it's being fed by that. Um, I, I'm not good at explaining things. But anyway, I think a diode is what I needed there. And I installed a switch on the backup beeper so I can turn that on and off um, if it becomes annoying. Now what I have to do is I have to make my patch cords. That was simple enough. Two trailer ends connected together. That's our, our four pin tester. Now we're going to make a seven pin tester. I've got this stuff here. I don't know what it is. It's got seven. It's got seven conductors in it. Some of them are a little bit light, but we'll see if we can make that work. I don't think I've got. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I may have uh, a proper piece of seven pole. Hang on. All right. I found this nice factory made bargeman uh, connector. So we just have to put a seven pole plug on this end of it and we can use this for our, our truck patch. Here's our seven pole jumper made. Last thing we have to make is the power input harness to go in there. There's our power input leads connected. I use these, uh, I think these are off an old battery charger or something. So this will allow me to hook it up either to a battery or to that thing. Now, my only hope this job would be perfect if now I can roll up all these three cords I've made and put them inside this box and close it. That's, that's my goal. So we're going to find out right now if that's possible. Everything's inside it and it closed. I guess that's a victory. Now I got to go in the house and get my label maker and I'm going to label all my switches so I know what the heck they're for. I'm not going to leave this piece of tape on there. 
One thing I need to consider on this is circuit protection. So I've got this 30 amp breaker. I'm going to put in the hot line coming in. We'll just splice it in right about there. So I just found a way to make this even better in all my junk. This is going to go, I'm going to bring the power up around to here. I'm going to put this six position breaker holder in and we're going to install circuit breakers for everything. That's the best way. That's more better. Every circuit has a circuit breaker. We've got a main circuit breaker coming in. The light is diode protected, so um, because the light is the one thing that can connect this and this together, I, I don't want that. I either want the truck feeding just these idiot lights or the power source feeding the trailer through this. I think we've got this thing licked. It's almost time to test it. Yeah, we're pretty much there. I just have to get my label maker and label the switches. And uh, all we got to do now is try this thing out. Got it all labeled up. That looks pretty snazzy, I have to say. It'll be amazing if the thing actually works. I mean, so far, it, considering I'm involved with it, it's gone pretty well. The first thing we're going to do, I guess, is just plug it into this old car here um, and see if the, I can get a few of these lights to light up. I'm not sure if it'll work because... I ha the lights are not in the car presently because I'm waiting for bulbs for it. But anyway, we'll uh, see what happens. Well, so far so good. I'm going to go plug it into one of the trucks now and see if the seven pole part of it works. So I just plugged it into my truck. The truck is off, but you can see the, the auxiliary feed is live. So we'll go now and uh, I'll put the ignition on and I'm going to see if I can get everything lit up. The only thing I can't check is that because um, I need an extra set of hands, somebody to hold the spike inside. But we'll see if the rest of them work. So there you go. Parking lights are on. Left and right are flashing or right and left. Reverse lights are on. And you can see the, the brake light is just blinking a little bit because this truck has a, a, a built-in electronic brake control. So it, it always does that. It's looking for the circuit. So that's working now. We're going to see if our little, our little buzzer works. works because sometimes I might be at the front of the truck and put it in reverse to see if it works. So let's see if the buzzer works. Yep, that's good. Should be able to hear that from the front. Wow, this is pretty cool. But I really made this to test trailers. So we're going to go out the back now and find a trailer and see if we can test a trailer. All right, so we've got it plugged into our old car dolly here. We've got our power pack hooked up. So first thing I'll do is check the park lights. Yep, they're on. Right turn, yep. Left turn, yep. This doesn't have reverse lights, but I can still turn them on. Um, the buzzer, yep, good. Turn those off, and we can energize the brakes. So that works. Um, to actually test if it's actually applying the brakes, I'd have to jack the thing up and spin a wheel, but um, the, the circuit's complete, so... I'd say that's working. That's awesome. Okay, back to the shop. So that's pretty awesome, eh? I'm very proud of myself that that, that all worked uh, the the first time I used it. I mean, it's not like it's overly complicated, but I'm uh, an overly simple person. So we're going to put this on the shelf, and uh, from now on, when we have trouble with trailers or trailer plugs or whatever... Uh, we've got a go-to tool to help us diagnose the problem. So I guess that's it for now. I uh, hope you'll tune in next time for the uh, continued hijinks at the Claremont Classic Garage. Anyway, until then, this is Kevin checking out. Thanks and so long.